Uh, okay, well, let's translate it. What is a dream? What is a dream? Subconscious. Okay, your subconscious doing what? Mm -hmm. Giving you messages? Processing. It can do that. It can be processing. It can be problem solving. What else could it be? Nonsense. It can be nonsense. Okay. Um, is it, but that's part of the processing. It can seem like nonsense because things need to be processed. It can be inspiration. It can be inspiration. Do you use the same body in the dream that you use in your waking day, day, day to day world? No, you use another body. It's a different body. So you're working on an, on a, in a different world than this world. We might call that the astral world or the astral plane. It's a, it's a very common way of, of looking at what's going on in, the, in, in when you're traveling and doing things in, in that time um, that, that you're on, a, on an astral plane. Now, as far as interpreting your dreams, what did we talk about just a minute ago with the Bible? It's all you. Yeah, it's all you. So if you're dreaming about a blue bird landed on your mom's foot while she was eating a burrito, the blue bird is you, the mom is you, the foot is you, the burrito is you. And what does it mean? <laughs> That's my question to you. What, is the, what does that mean? It doesn't necessarily have to mean something, but what does it make you feel? What did you feel? What is that telling you? What are, what are you, what are you, what are, what are, what are, what are, what are, how did you wake up feeling from that dream? What were you, what were you experiencing? Yeah, that's why I'm addressing the dreams because, uh, of course, they don't make any sense to me. Okay, and, here's something, go ahead. I'm wondering why I'm writing them down when they are not only, uh, just, don't... just something to do. <laughs> just gives you gives you something to do so that I you know I can t I can tell you that I taught you something no um, and then I can go home and you'll I'll be able to say you'll never believe what I got this woman to do <laughs> she's writing her dreams <laughs> no when you're writing your dreams down, you're because are, when you when you write your dreams down, do you do you find that you are any more able to recall your dreams than when you don't write them down? Yes. Okay, that's w the main reason why we write them down is it gives us more recall. But uh, they are so so such a nonsense. I don't really care for. Well, first of all, you don't have to do it. If you don't want to do it, just stop. If it's not, if it doesn't give you any, any, anything, that's the first thing. There's nobody, there's no witch police. Nobody's going to say, oh, you didn't do your dream diary. You, gotta, you don't get to do a spell. Um, but at the same time, you are saying that you don't understand what your dreams mean. Mm -hmm. You could just as easily instruct your deep mind before you go to sleep that you are going to show me things in my dreams in a way that I understand so that it's not so hard for you yeah don't use those those, those are going to confuse you more do you have do you have a for instance a dream for instance an example Okay, because that's a that's a good way to that's a good way to look at your dreams is not so much that they mean something out here, it's that they re represent a different part of you, you know. And and a lot of times it's very obvious if you look at it from, you know, from from an objective point of view that there's one part of me talking to another part of me. And it, may, it makes perfect sense if you look at it objectively. I mean, I, like last night, well, I don't want to tell you that dream. <laughs> oh, goodness. It wasn't that kind of dream, but it was definitely something personal. Um, it was personal about somebody else, too. But, like, like for instance, like, like I, I had a dream once that, that, there, that we were going to have an earthquake. It was a big earthquake, and it was scary. And this was a long time ago. 
Um, so either the precognition is way decades in the future or because we never had that. Or I could I, what I did is I looked at all of the destruction and the people in the dream as parts of me and the destruction as part of me and the walls that came down as part of me and the shaking as part of me and all of that. What was I trying to tell myself? Well, that I'm going through a big change. I'm going through a big change and it's and it's hard and it's and it feels like destruction. Tower. Yeah, it could that could be another symbol, the tower, right. I love the tower. I think it's a wonderful card. All Aries love the tower. Well, but well because like, oh, it's my card. No, it's not. I didn't used to love the tower because I was I was taught that it was such a negative card until I recognized and I really looked at it. All the people in the, that card look really bored. <laughs> they really couldn't care less. This is like, yeah, whatever. Um, same thing with the with the double card. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm chained. And it's so obvious they could just take it off. If they could take the chains off and walk away if they wanted to, but no, they choose not to. I mean, they choose to. They choose not to. And so, but I love what I love about the tower card is that it's. It's that, that that lightning bolt from above is such inspiration, and that's so positive. And all of the stuff that's falling away is stuff that, that the characters in that card couldn't be bothered with anyway. They didn't really care about it anyway. And so when I see the, the when I see the tower the the the, the uh, tower in a in a tarot spread, um, I usually am like, oh good, this is something. I can let go of. There's something that I've been like hanging on to so desperately that it's finally I can just relax because all that stuff is is not important anymore for me. And it doesn't mean destruction to me. It means, well, it does mean destruction. It means destruction of old thought forms that no longer serve me. So I, I always love the tower. Mm-hmm.